step it down a little bit because when, when I go live, the camera always zooms in more. Shalom, Yasharala. Shalom. All right, we are the Hebrew Israelites coming out here week in and week out, all right, to push the gospel, all right, meaning good news for the children of Israel, all right, from all the modern day so called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, the Israelite foreigners scattered across the four corners of the earth, all right, including within America, Babylon the Great, the main place of our captivity. We are the Most High, Yahweh chose the people of Israel, that, 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 that the kingdom of heaven is nigh, and also prophesied against Mount Seir, all right. The modern day inhabitants of Mount Seir, are you Edomites, to self my white people, and to proclaim your downfall, okay, uh, due to your wickedness, all right? So, uh, so without further ado, all right, we're going to go ahead and start off by giving all praise, glory, infinite honor to our power. Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, by Hashem, and All right, there's all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh, shine the Holy Spirit, who is our strength and our Redeemer and our light and our salvation. All right, I'm going to say in, uh, in Hebrew, Mashana, Kabwadium, Laha Sephonium. Shal Gadawab Akab, all right, meaning double honors to the apostles and elder bishop, great millstone, and Shalom, honors and salutations to Bayashad the 144,000, elect the governing body of the house of David, all right, along with the rest of one third elect men, women, and children of Israel, all right. We come out here week in, week out, in, in season, not a season, but specifically, all right, it's about our third time in Albuquerque. We got another uh, camp, another special edition camp out here in Albuquerque, Mexico, and Adam right this out, Lord willing, be edifying the glory to the elect. All right. Yep. All right. Open form. I'm gonna go ahead and start off in the book of uh, Ezekiel, 35th chapter. All right. Start from the top. Ezekiel, Ezekiel, 35 and one. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, "Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it." All right. So they say, why do you always talk about this society being destroyed? Why do you talk about uh, Esau eating the so-called white man going down because the Lord told us to do that man. Okay. He says set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it All right, we know that not every so-called white person is an Edomite. All right, but the vast majority of Edomites are so-called white people Okay, according to biblical prophecy. They're the only ones that fit the prophecies of Esau the wicked that be ruling over the earth at the time of the end when Yahweh Shai returns Okay, so the Lord commanded us. He said go out there and prophesy against Mount Seir Okay Tell them what, the, what, what their end is going to be. Tell them that their kingdom is getting ready to fall, okay, and that they're going to go head first in the captivity, starting off with the elites, the Rothschilds, the Gettys, the Bloombergs, the Eifenhowers, all right, the elite banking families, okay, the ones that are running the society in wickedness, all right, the ones that are, are constantly setting up uh, laws and stumbling blocks to oppress the poor, okay? The Lord is, is going to flip it. The first shall be last and the last shall be first, as the scriptures say. Matter of fact, I think that's um, is that Matthew 16 and 25. Okay, check, 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 check that one right quick, Bob Shaw. All right, so the Lord told us to come out here and prophesy, man. Okay, tell, tell these Edomites, uh, your kingdom is coming to a close. All right, and the kingdom of Yasharala, the tabernacle of David, is getting ready to be raised up, and they're going to rule over this earth in righteousness, man. Okay, no, no, no more will you see Transformers walking up and down the street, two niggas t walking uh, up and down the street holding hands, man. All right, you're not going to see that no more. All right, women being given uh, freedom and liberty. You know, to gad abroad and, 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 and to sleep with, with Tom, Dick, Harry, Larry, Curly, Moe, Bloody Red, all right, Ray Ray, Jojo, none of that, okay? You're not going to have the liberty to, to, to be a whore anymore. You're going to have one man and one man only. You're going to only biblically know, meaning uh, sleep with one man your entire life, according to biblical prophecy, man, according to the, to the law and such commandments of the Heavenly Father, okay? This kingdom where you've been able to, to do wickedness is going to be taken down and the righteous uh, kingdom is going to be set up. And the people are going to rejoice. All right, is that the precept though? No, it's uh, St. Matthew 20 to 16. Okay, so lock it. Okay. Yep. Yeah, bring it out. Yep, yeah, bring it out. Is it St. Okay. Matthew chapter 20 and verse 16? It says, So the last shall be first, and the first last. Right. For so, many be called, but few chosen. All right, so the first shall be last. Okay. Who is the first? All right, Esau came up before Jacob. Okay, he was the firstborn son, but he's going to be last in this time, all right? And the last, okay, those who are under the curses, okay, the, 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 the least favored in the society, 
All right, they're going to be first. They're going to receive the blessings. Okay, they're going to be the first fruits of the kingdom. You got to preach that. Fine, this is um, Second Ezra, chapter 6 and verse 9. And it reads, for Esau, start at verse 7. No, I'm going to get to the point. Oh, fire, second, fire. Yep. Second Ezra 6 and 9, <laughs> I'll get to the point. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. Right, Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. All right, so whatever whoever's ruling at the end of this society, that's Esau, okay? And Jacob comes right behind that, you see? Jacob, his, whose name was changed to Israel, which in the Paleo-Hebrew is Yasharala, okay? The princes of the power, the sons of the Most High. And they're gonna rule this earth in righteousness. And that's what we come out here to prophesy of. We come out here to, can you give me Isaiah 35 and four? Okay, we come out here to prophesy of, 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 uh, of the elect being delivered to the first fruits of the kingdom, okay? And, and to, to proclaim judgment unto these heathen nations, man, as the prophets before us have always done. Okay, let me get a quick precept on that. While, while you grabbing yours, I'm gonna get this right quick. The book of uh, Jeremiah, chapter 28, and verse you. eight. Oh, he was going there? <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire, fire. All right, so this, so when we, we come, we come to do two things. I right, prophesy of salvation for the elect and prophesy of destruction and damnation, all right, for the wicked. This is the book of Jeremiah 28 and 8, and it reads, The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied, all right, meaning to tell you what's going to happen before it even happens, all right, both against many countries against, and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence, all right? Because that's, that's, that's what the Lord has come back to do, establish judgment, okay, judgment on the earth, man. All right, the, 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 the wicked shall be punished and the righteous are going to be rewarded in the time to come. Okay, you got that precept? Okay, uh, this is um, Isaiah chapter 35 and verse 4. And it reads, Say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your power will come with vengeance. Right. Even the Most High Yahweh with the recompense. He will come and save you. Right, so he says, he says, uh, uh, say to them that have a fearful heart. Who is that talking about? I was talking about Jacob. Okay? Because it, it tells you in the curses, Deuteronomy 28th chapter, that your lives should always hang in doubt. Are right? you always being feared because of the curses? And that's this society, man. Okay? As a so called Negro, all right, Latino or Native American Indian, all right, the threat of violence is always there. The police can come, they can bang you down, you know, police brutality, so to speak. All right? And there's, there's not, there's not going to be any recompense against that, man. There's no way to protect that, except for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Okay, it, 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 we know that, that Esau is going to come down against us having great wrath. And two thirds of our people, okay, they're going to be in fear. All right. But the Lord says, say to them that are of a fearful heart, those that are up under the curses, that your, your power, your God shall come down with vengeance. Against who? Against your oppressors. Against the wicked. All right? Against Esau Edom. All right. And he shall come and save you. So it goes hand in hand. All right, the vengeance, the vengeance, okay, the vengeance against Esau and the salvation of the Israelites starting off with the elect go hand in hand. So that's what we come out here to prophesy of, man, okay? To prophesy unto Mount Seir what their judgment is going to be. Let me get this quick precept. Revelation 11 and 18. It says, and the nations were angry. As a matter of fact, I'm going to start at, uh, I'm going to start at verse 17. Revelation 11 and 17. Saying, we give thank, we give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and was and art to come. All right, because he's he's the beginning, the, the end, Alpha and the Omega, and he's been here before, right? In the flesh, Yahweh Shai. Because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. All right, so that's what he's gonna do. When he comes, he's gonna take the power. The saints are gonna take the kingdom, man. Right. Okay, Yahweh Shai is not gonna come down here and, and write a letter to Esau and say, hey. Do you, do you mind if we take over the, the earth? No, he's going to come down with the armies of heaven and he's going to take this place by force. All right. It says, he has taken thee, taken to thyself great power and has reigned. And the nations were angry and thy wrath is come against the wicked and the time of the dead that they should be judged and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets and to the saints and then that fear thy name, small and great. And it should just destroy them which destroyeth the earth. Okay, so when, when the Lord comes back, okay, he's going to do what? He's going to execute vengeance and wrath 
upon a heathen and he's going to deliver his elect. And that's what we come to prophesy of, to prophesy the downfall of Mount Seir. You got a precept on? Right. There's a St. Matthew 24 and 31, but I started at verse 29. Bring it out. It says, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Why? Because these nukes are going to be uh, 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 raining down, all right, and releasing uh, a thermonuclear fire upon this place, man. That's really what it goes into when it says the stars are falling, so to say, man. It goes into in Isaiah 13 chapter. Because right. our, our forefathers were not uh, 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 aware or familiar with the, with the matter of technology that, that they were envisioning. And in terms of these uh, ICBM uh, 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 missiles. Right. Okay? So that's going to happen these last days in the aftermath of that destruction in this last world's war, Harmon God won. Modern day World War III is going gonna, is gonna, to uh, result in the deliverance of the elect of Yasharala, okay, from the hands of the enemies. That's it. It's the same Matthew 24 and 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, to Yahweh And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Like the brother was saying, man, Yahweh Shot's coming to take this thing, man. He's not coming to ask politely, okay? And all of a sudden, it's further add on to that. When it, when it said the tribes of the earth are mourning, tribe means family. The word tribe means family. So mean the families or nations of the earth are mourning. Why? Because they're gonna they're gonna understand and be forced to acknowledge their demise. Right. Okay, their detriment at the hand of their creator. Right, right. Okay? And because oh, so oh, And because the nation's been talking BS. They've been talking their mess, man. All right. You know, they see us out here prophesying and we speak of, you know, uh, 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 um, uh, angelic force coming out of the heavens with so-called UFOs to take over the earth, to them that's foolishness. So they've been talking their mess, oh God ain't real, you know, the atheism crap, all that's being pushed throughout the four corners of the earth. But in that day, they're gonna mourn because they're gonna know we messed up and it's too late. All right, we, we spoke out against the God of, of heaven, man, okay? The power of heaven and he's coming down now with great wrath against us. Everything the prophets were saying is gonna come to pass, man. They're gonna realize that in that day, but it's gonna be too late. And that's the Lord's movie. Then their destruction is going to come. That's why they're going to mourn. All right. You got one more verse on that? Verse 31. Time. All right. Here's the point. And, and, and just like in, in uh, Shalom, uh, to beloved brother, Tawalai uh, uh, in the common voice. Hey, Tawalai. Yeah, How about Shemesh Shabbat 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 Shabbat. All right. Yep. So Matthew 24 and 31. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds for one end of heaven to the other right all right so, go i was gonna say that lines up with uh deuteronomy 28 and 64 and Deut uh saint james 101 going into how the electorate uh, dispersed across the four corners of earth hence why in saint luke 24 and 47 yahushua told us to uh, uh, prophesy to the to the heathen okay right. to the prophesy to the other nations rather because he understood uh the curse of israel being scattered across the four corners that's why Yahweh is going to gather his elect from the four corners, man. Right. In, in, in the midst of the heathen. Dwelling amongst the heathen. Right. Not just in America, Babylon the Great, where uh, the bulk of the captives of Jerusalem were, were predominantly uh, 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 scattered. Okay? Right. So this is uh, St. Matthew 24. Well, that, was the, that was actually the point. I'll read it again. Yeah. St. Matthew 24 and 31. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Yep, that's right. So, once again, the the the, at least the Israelites, I were scattered, okay, throughout the four corners of the earth, man. We're primarily here in Babylon the Great. So we're we're captive exiles here, and the one that's hold that's uh, hold held us in captivity, okay, is Esau. All right. Now we don't have physical chains on our necks, you know, yokes of iron, uh, and and, uh, and chains on our feet and hands. All right. But most of our people have been mentally enslaved. Okay, they don't, they don't have to physically enslave you anymore because you're institutionalized already. All right, and the Lord, that's what this truth really is. That's, what, that's the reason why even going back to the time of the Roman Empire, okay, with Apostle Paul and them, when they were out there preaching in the book of Acts, okay, the Romans were talking about how this truth has turned the world upside down. Okay, you go into that word world, and the Greek is cosmos, okay, which means an orderly arrangement of government. So the, the government, the rulership, the kingdom of Esau, all right, which is the Roman Empire, and today... We are in the second leg of the Roman Empire. This knowledge, this truth, it turns the world upside down. All right, it turns this society upside down. Why? Because the only way that the society runs uh, efficiently is if 
you 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 underclass of this society you, you know you you jakes okay jacob so-called negroes latinos native american indians mm -hmm. all right the oppressed people of this society as long as you are asleep to your state of condition then this society will run efficiently and peacefully but when we come out here and tell you this truth the truth it sets your mind free could you get um um john 8 32 book show okay. okay all right this truth that sets your mind free all right now you realize that majority of our people are actually mentally enslaved all right and what what, what are you going to do when you when you're mentally enslaved what are you going to do okay and you realize that you you wake up to that fact all right it's going to make you angry okay and you're going to rebel and that's exactly what they don't want let me get a quick precept on that the book of ecclesiastes seven and seven all right and it reads it says Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, all right? And a gift destroyeth the heart, okay? Oppression makes a wise man mad. So you find, you wake up to the fact that your people are still in bondage, you know, but now it's mental. You have mental shackles on you, all right? It's going to piss you off. It's going to make you angry, all right? And, and you're going to want to rebel. But we don't, we don't have to rebel because Yahweh Shai is going to come down and destroy. All we have to do is prophesy and our Lord, our Savior, okay, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai is going to come down and deliver us from the hands of our enemies, man. All right. Two points I want to add on to that. You know, yep. uh, the first one is um, there's a comment by uh, this Edomite named William Cooper, uh -huh. aka Bill Cooper, who wrote that book, uh, Behold a Pale Horse, uh, predicated off of Revelation or, or based off of Revelation 6 chapter, where William Cooper said or pointed out in that book in an interview that um, bread and circuses has been used as a, as a, as a vice. To distract the minds of, of of the of the sheep from the hell that they're in, right? Okay, on having a, including having to pay taxes. When there's you know if there's no petition to pay the wicked elite taxes, we still have to pay taxes, which are minor Roman tributaries. All right, and the fact that we don't own anything. Case in point: if you have a if you have a car, even if you paid the car off completely, if you if you don't pay your uh, your annual uh, 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 registration, they can seize your car, man. Right, right. So I've heard confirms we're, we're subject to payments, case in point. Right. Okay. Then, then uh, 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 and then uh, it reminds me of a saying where, basically, roughly paraphrasing, where it goes, um, the best slave is a slave that doesn't understand they're a slave. Exactly. Okay. Right. Forgot that priest to be called for. Yep. Saying John eight and thirty two, it says, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. All right. Make your minds free. And that's why Romans, uh, uh, twelve and two says, uh, uh, how you know we. We were commanded to conform our minds from this world, man. Because right. the world was given to the hands of the wicked. So if you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy to Yahweh by Shem and Shai, and it says in St. James 4 and 4, man. Right. Okay? Because the people that are running this world are the uh, the, the antithesis to the Heavenly Father Yahweh. All right? Everything that he tells you to do in his book, they tell you to do the opposite. All right? So if, you, if, you're, if you, you, can't, you can't be joined and be friends, you know, you can't be in bed with, with Yahweh and with Esau. All right? And you got to be so you got to make a choice Esau he knows his kingdom's going down because we're constantly coming out here prophesying about it all right so you got to make a choice so you you're either gonna run with the Lord and, and accept whatever comes with that or you're going to 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 join up to the princes of this world man okay let me uh let me check the comment board right quick okay brother said uh I don't know who this guy is but we, we don't have anybody that's uh, a moderator Matter of fact, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and if thought will lie if you still on here I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make you a moderator uh go go ahead and um i don't know who this is mama rika hey go go ahead go ahead and just delete her comments and bl uh, block her from commenting all right and, and, and unless she unless she's a sincere a sincere sister which i doubt it with a comment like that all right but we do have elders yeah, uh have elders. yeah we do have elders i don't i don't know right i don't know i've never seen her before yeah. but right right anyways yeah you know uh hey if you're a sincere sister then you know then let it let that be known next few minutes yeah scripture says uh, uh let, let your woman remain in silence right first corinthians the 14th chapter right right the woman is to remain in silence in the churches but uh anyways continuing on with the lesson all right yeah yeah, yeah go ahead and bring it out this yep. is ephesians chapter 4 in verse uh uh sorry verse 1 therefore the prisoner of the lord yahweh by shim and beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called with all lowliness and meekness with long suffering for bring one another in love, and love is keeping the law, such commandments, and under this grace period, we're expected to rehearse them. Okay, verse three. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 3 says, Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. And, all right, and that peace lies within Yahweh Shai. Because he said in St. John 16 and 33, In me ye shall have peace, and the world shall have tribulation. Why? Because what are the curses? Part of those curses being given over to our enemies, including uh, Esau, Edom. Yep. Ephesians 4 and 4, here's a, there's a point. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called to one hope of your calling. Verse 5, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. All right? right. Meaning what? There's only one truth. Right. Lining, you know, and Fred expanding on what that man of truth is talking about in St. John 18.32, that, that was a set of minds free. Because right. there's a time coming where, as soon as Isaiah 33 and 6, we're going to be expected to lean on the true understanding of the scriptures, okay, which will, will, which will be our line of defense. We'll keep through our, through our shield of faith in, in a time of trouble, man. Right. It says in Isaiah 33 and 6, man. Okay. Let me go ahead and grab that public shot. You see Isaiah 33 and 6? Yeah, yeah. Con, con. All right. Let me go ahead and get it. Con. The book of Isaiah, chapter 33 and verse 6. It says, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. All right, so in these, in these, in these, these last days, Let's speak up. The, uh, kind of these last days, the true divine wisdom, doctrine, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, all right, should be the stability of our times, okay, within our minds in these last days, which is uh, our hearts, which means mind, okay, okay, where, where the Holy Spirit sucks with. So that's what's going to make our mind stable when all hell is breaking loose, including these, uh, uh, the majority of these people getting put to death, getting devoured by wild animals, dropping dead by way of pestilence, okay, all right, you're being put to death. With any strange calamities, okay, right. through uh, 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 through bullets, okay, uh, uh, weather catastrophes, and so forth, man. Right, okay, right. our man, when our man is of death is happening, we're going to be stable. We're going to be like Denzel in the movie The Book of Eli, man. Right, right. Okay, which which I'm glad it's open forum because uh, that that whoever that woman was that commented talking about y'all need elders, guarantee you she's a Christian. Right. All right, you Christians are through, man. Okay, you, you're not you don't got the truth. And when this time comes, that that plantation Christianity. You know, uh, we are the world, got to love everything and everyone. That's not going to, there's no power in that, all right? When the time comes for Jacob's trouble and the great tribulation, you ain't, you're not going to have no knowledge, any wisdom, under, understanding, so you're not going to have any stability, man. Okay, the things that we prophesy of is, is are the things that are coming down the pipeline and we're preparing our minds and our hearts and the, the hearts of our flock to be prepared for these things that are coming down the pipeline. So we're not going to come with that family-friendly, you know, kisses and hugs and love and rainbows message, man. All right, that, that, that the Christian church teaches you. That's a bunch of bull crap. That's not what the Lord is coming with. Yeah, because that's not a part of that one that one truth. All right? Exactly. That, that, that's not a part of that one truth, man, that one baptism. Now, speaking of baptism, before you're going to get that, yep. I was going to say that part of that baptism is going through the trials and tribulations. That's why how Shah said, you know, roughly paraphrasing, I have a baptism that you, that you, that you don't know of. Meaning, yeah. he was the only one worthy enough to be crucified because he's Alpha and Omega. Meaning, he was, uh, you know, he, he was the firstborn uh, of the visible power right, spoke right. about in the book of Romans that was the only one worthy enough to shed his blood all right his precious blood for the mission of sins of Israel so that was part of his baptism be crucified man and suffered the most tormenting uh, 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 grueling and gruesome death in the history of mankind for the mission of sins of Israel man so that was part of his baptism his trial his his lot of trials and tribulations man okay which we're gonna have, which we're gonna have our own portion of trials and tribulations, man. A part of our our, our baptism, yeah. okay. Which beginning of that baptism being, you know, is coming is being born again through the Holy Spirit, okay. But part of that baptism is going through the trials and tribulations, man. Spiritual fire, right? Spiritual fire. He spoke about in Second Ezra the 16th chapter, man. When Esau comes with that insurrection against the saints, okay. So to further land back on that, it's in Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 7. It says, "Alas." For that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even a time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it, the elect of Jacob. Right, so right. So it says in Amos tonight, you have to get that Bible shot. Yeah, Amos 9 and 10? Uh, kind. Okay. Let's start at verse 8. All right, yeah. All right. But uh, yeah, it says, you know, uh, 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 the sinful, uh, uh, Amos 9 and 10 says, the sinners of Yahweh by Shemeshah, uh, the, the Yahweh by Shemeshah people shall be given to the sword. Yeah, right? Yes, yeah, all right. the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. Kind. All right, I got that preset. Right, I'm going to bring out a point after you. Okay. All right. Hang on. Okay. okay, here it is. The book of Amos, chapter 9. I'm going to start at verse 8. Behold, the eyes of the Lord, Yahweh, are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from out the face of the earth, saying that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. For lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel, 
among all nations, like as corn is sifted in a seed, yet shall not the least grain fall upon earth. So he said, I'm gonna sift the house of Jacob out of all nations, all right? Because the Israelites have been scattered, right? So he's gonna, he's gonna gather that remnant, the elect, and prepare them to be delivered, okay? And when that time comes, Jacob's trouble, all right, the, the World War III, nuclear fire, all those different things, they're gonna escape all these different evils that are coming down the pipeline, okay? But those that, are, that don't have the truth, those that are not a part of the knowledge, all right, but because ultimately you're not a part of the elect, you're going to be left in these troubles and you're not going to have any idea why these things are happening because they're not talking about this stuff in the Christian church, man. Okay, they, they, don't, they don't talk about war, evil, pestilence, okay, houses being broken into, women getting graped, okay, children being, their damn heads getting cut off. Because that's what the scriptures about, it says is about to happen, man. Okay, it's going to be all out chaos and mayhem here in America, Babylon the Great, in every city. It don't matter where you are, even in the countryside. Why? Because there's going to be a lack of food. You're going to have a, a physical famine and, and a, a famine of the word. People are going to be confused. They're not, you give me second Ezra 5 and 1. They're not going to know all right, why these things are coming down the pipeline. They don't, they don't know why these things are happening because to most of the people in the world, they're looking for the kingdom here in America. All right. When you go to the Christian church, they tell you, you know, oh, okay, uh, um, you know, if, if you serve God, put a little, put a little, uh, a little seed in and the Lord's going to bless you with a new job, a new house. Where the scriptures tell you, I will leave in the midst of the poor and afflicted people. Okay. The, the, the saints of the Lord are supposed to be looking for this place to be destroyed because once this place gets destroyed, that's when the kingdom of heaven is going to come in on the earth, man. Okay, and the elect is going to be delivered. Are we coming to the end? Of you, you said, are we coming to an end? Yeah, is everything coming to an end already? Is that what you're that's exactly what we're saying. Now, here's the thing. So, it's the end of this society, but the beginning of the, of the next one, which is going to be what, what people call the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is not going to be in the sky. The kingdom of heaven is going to be on the earth. It tells you that in Zechariah 14 and 9. It says, the Lord shall reign over, he shall be a king over all the earth. See, I was understood that we're, we're gonna, the world's going to end in fire. Is that true? Yes, that is true. Okay. So according to prophecy, which we can read it to you if you'd like us to. Every, and feel free to, anything we say, feel free to challenge us in a respectful way. Because our whole point is to make it to where you have the tools to go and read the Bible yourself and see it for yourself. All right, We, we just guide you to the, to the certain scriptures because what we're talking about, the scriptures that we read, you're not going to hear in the church because the vast majority of Christian churches, actually pretty much I would say virtually all of them, have something that's called a 501c3 charter. And what that is, yeah. it's a tax exemption status. So with that tax exemption status, they, when they collect tithes, they don't have to pay taxes on it. But there's, it's a gag order. There's certain stipulations. They're not allowed to talk about anything that could be, sedi uh, could be uh, considered sedition against the powers that be, so to speak, the established government. So we prophesy, we're really, it's really open sedition because we're telling you that the rules of this earth of this earth are getting ready to, to fall so we're really prophesying of their downfall and of the coming of the one who the world calls jesus and he's going to set he's going to set up an, a, a, a righteous kingdom on the earth but according to biblical prophecy this society is going to fall by world war three okay russia china north korea a company of nations from the east are going to shoot missiles upon america and then america is going to shoot missiles back but this is the only land that's going to be completely wiped out by nuclear fire. The other lands, they're going to be hit, but they're not going to be completely destroyed. And when that happens, you heard of what people call a rapture, okay? Once the missiles get shot off, all of those that are of the elect, which is the, the Lord's true sheep, they're going to be beamed up. You know, the, the chariots, the vehicles, the angels are going to you know, cover the skies. When it says the Lord shall come with clouds, that's what it's talking about. He's going, to, he's going to pop out of the skies. Everybody's going to see him, and the elect is going to start getting beamed up. Once those sirens go off, and if, at the same hour, missiles are going to start dropping. And that's what it said when it says the, uh, the stars shall fall from the sky like figs on a fig tree. That's what it's talking about because they didn't, the prophets that saw it, they didn't know what nuclear missiles was. They didn't exist back then. So they described it as the, the stars falling from the sky. They're going to start dropping and this whole place is going to be consumed in nuclear fire. Go ahead, bring it out. Say Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. It says, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came into him privately saying, tell us. When shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? All right, and that's, that's the world of these people, the end of their world. Right, yeah, these, these people right here, they represent what, what, you call, what you would call Lucifer in the Bible. When you, Lucifer is only mentioned one time in the Bible, Isaiah the 14th chapter. And it tells you that all the nations are gonna look at Lucifer and say, is this the man that caused the whole earth to tremble? So because these are like false well, well, no, Illuminati. Yeah, this is who you call the Illuminati. So you have like the Rockefellers, 
You got David Rockefeller, oh, okay, the Rothschilds. Okay, okay, okay. Right, these, these, these are, are an elite seed line on the left-hand side that have been ruling the earth for the past 2,000 plus years. Even going back to when the Savior was on the scene, uh, Apostle Paul, all of them, they spoke it. They said the, the, they said the mystery of iniquity is already at work, meaning that the, the, who the people call the Antichrist or whatever, yeah, right, right. it's these guys. It's not talking about one person. And everybody who is, like the presidents, you had the, we just had the elections pass, Donald Trump, Kamala Harris, it doesn't matter, they're already selected. Right. No matter who is, whoever has power in this society, they're being moved by these people on this side, which is generally the elite banking families, the Rothschilds, Gettys, Bloombergs. Yeah, that makes sense, bro. It right. does. It, yeah, does it says in Revelation, the 17th chapter, that um, the whore shall sit upon many waters, as in many governments. Right. And a whore talking about America. Who runs the whore as a um, as a the top uh, uh, capitalistic corporation of consumerism, capitalism, and so forth? Right. These people. That's why they, they they fund all the banking the the the, the wars because all these wars are banking wars. You're for example, right? right? right. Yeah. And then right. in the Bible, they're also known as the Dukes of Edom. Yes. They're, they're Edomites. Their biblical nationality are Edomites. Right. That's the modern day Caucasians or white people. Okay. Right. You see what I'm saying? So. And not not all of them. Not all of them. But uh, yeah. some of them. Man, because you yeah, mean what you're talking about is you have Israelites. Okay, you have Israelites that are on the sign right there. Right. That, that, that some some Israelites that you see on the sign there yeah. that look like these people. Right, right, exactly. Okay, that's what he's talking about. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so but, we, but but when you but these, but these are the people that run the world. Right. The rulers of the darkness of this world in Ephesians six chapter. So this is the end of their world that the disciples were inquiring about in the same Matthew twenty four and three. Right. Because when they when we because there's now I'm, uh, now keep listening. Okay, I'm gonna get because it goes into more detail. Okay. All right. So this is the same Matthew. 24 and 4. I'll read it verbatim. It says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. False prophets, essentially. Okay? Right, right. You know? Verse yeah, 6. You see that happening. Right. See, this is my understanding. Because, you know, Christians, like he said, you don't really get a whole lot out of it. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. I've been a Christian most of my life. You know what I mean? Not really. This we all were. Right, all right, right, right. And, uh, yeah. You know, like they said, he, he shall he shall take one or take two and leave one. Is that the truth? Yeah, that's in uh, you're thinking of uh, Jeremiah three fourteen maybe. Yeah, I he, think what you're talking about is basically what you're talking about how Christ said that he would set a variance amongst the households and he would he would choose yeah, he yeah. would choose like one out of the household. Yeah, right. right that's yeah. what we have because yep. because it says in Saint Matthew ten and thirty four. Uh, he came to he came to uh, uh, to the sword. right. But, you th but uh, you're thinking of uh, Luke twelve and fifty one actually. No, no. Well, no. The one where he's well, the one where he said. He 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 was he was a uh, he came to, to bring division. That's Luke twelve fifty one. Okay, right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So he, he came to bring division, because he because because the elect because when the Messiah comes back, he's uh, Jesus uh -huh. Christ. When he comes back, he's going to come to deliver the elect of Israel. Right. Okay, because uh, the Lord's sanctuary is a very small one. I got that precept. Go ahead. Uh, Luke twelve and fifty one. It says, "Suppose ye that I am come to bring, to give peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division." So when it's talking about like, you know, like you said, that, uh, I'll take one of a family, right, you know, right. 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 So what that, what that means is pretty much the elect is, a, like you said, it's a small sanctuary. So when you when you come into the truth, you're, you, most people are used to the family friendly, you know, God loves everybody, right, 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 love and right, right. peace, right? That's not what the Bible actually says. And when you, when you really read it, especially the prophecies, which the prophecies is primarily Isaiah through Malachi. When you read it, it tells you when the Lord comes back, He's gonna kill the vast majority of people on the earth. See, my my thing is, I I, I don't really comprehend that word. You know what? I can't understand that word. But yeah. now you guys are in another way. Yep. You know what I mean? And I'm bringing right. out more now. It gets juicier, so to say, spiritually, in terms of recognizing the signs uh, of the end of their world. Okay, which would be a, a ending sign. Okay, or beginning or, or a beginning sign, if you will. For the righteous kingdom that will follow that right for these people right the Israelites. and if i may I, I do want to say this as well okay when we talk about these different things people are going to turn against you because they can't understand that when this society go is destroyed that's, that's the devil right yeah, there man yes yeah, yeah, satan shit. doing that <laughs> but anyways um what i was saying is that most people because they're used to like I said the, the the family friendly doctrine and all that stuff when they hear you like when they hear us talking about oh war yeah. is coming you know, evil, diseases, famines. They're like, why are you being so negative? Because they don't understand that when all these things come, we're looking forward to it because that means that the elect is getting ready to be saved. So people are gonna turn on you because they're like, oh, this guy, he just, he's just angry with the world. He hates everything and everyone. 
it's not even that, it's that we are happy to see the fall of this world because we want to go into the kingdom. When you, when you really read the scriptures, it tells you over and over, this is not your rest. You're not supposed to prosper here. If you're one of the elect, one of the Lord's chosen people, you're not supposed to be rich and living lavishly in this society. Even when you go back to Matthew, the fourth chapter, it said that the Savior went up to the mountain to be tempted with the devil. The devil told him, he said, if you will, if you will bow down, I'll wait till this uh, ambulance goes by. That's the devil, man. I'm telling you. It's, it's, hey, because, because this this guy's trying to get understanding, and now all of a sudden it's a bunch of noise, a bunch yep. of distractions, right? What I was saying is that um, even when the Savior went up to the mountain to be tempted of the devil, the devil said, if you will bow down and worship me, I will give you rulership over all the kingdoms of the earth. So okay. the devil can bless you too. When you really read the scriptures, you see that the Lord's people are the poor. He said, blessed are the poor, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. So you're not, if you're rich and you're, you know, you're wealthy and everybody in this world loves you, that's probably because you're a friend of the world. And if you're a friend of the world, you're enemy with the most high. See, people have told me this. I don't know how true it is. They say that we're already coming to the ends of the world. That people are already going against, brothers are turning against brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're at that point now. Whatever. Yeah. You the know, elections. That's my, yeah. the way I, I. Exactly. Come. That's like, because you're, because the Holy Spirit is, is, is uh, uh, opening up your understanding. Right. All right. Supping with your mind. It says Revelation right. 3 and 20. You yep. see? But to add on what you're saying, we'll go to finish this off and say yep. Matthew 24 and 6. Yep. It says, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. I'm going to stop right there. Yeah, by, by bringing out the example, another example uh, uh, of Trump, for example, right? Because uh, as of recently, he was talking about how he, um, he wants to restore quote unquote law and order in major cities, including reinstating stop and frisk and implementing the death penalty for drug dealers referring to uh you know the, the migrants that are smuggling people and whatnot all right you know you're using that this whole uh border crisis slash migrant surge as a trojan horse all right to, to further uh, uh spark this civil war right. that's prophesied in the scriptures as well another another end, uh, end time sign of prophecy for being fulfilled right. so that's part of these rumors of wars you know what i'm saying so you're right i just want to um expound on your point with prophecy because um also, like like you said, a part of that great tribulation, he, he mentioned it, is civil war. All right, what do so. You guys, uh, have your church or whatever. Uh, so we just preach on the streets. Okay. Actually, we're based out of El Paso. Okay. We come up, we come up here every whenever we get the chance to. Uh, but yeah, our main city we preach in is El Paso. So if you want, I give my YouTube channel, and um, you can you can find us on there, and you could you could email me. I give you you know my email. You can contact us, and, and we'll let you know when we come out if you want to come and, and listen and fellowship. Uh, but yeah, I mean we. Yeah, we, we just, we, we go into, we focus on prophecy, the deeper mysteries of the Bible, and pretty much preparing yourselves for the time to come, because you, you may not have heard us, but we brought out a scripture, Isaiah 33 and 6, and I, I quote out on the top of my head, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and the strength of thy salvation. So, could you give me uh, Psalms 91 yep. real quick? Okay, it tells you that, essentially, the more knowledge and wisdom that you have, the more stable you're going to be in these times, because, like I said, we're constantly talking about all these things we're keeping our mind focused on them so when that time comes and we start to see it what is the rest of the world they're going to do they're going to freak out they're going to be like why is god allowing all these things to happen there's bloodshed all over the streets and people you know people breaking each other's homes all kind of chaos now, now is it wrong that guy got baptized in the water is that, is that no no it, it's, it's not wrong but it's more symbolic right. the true baptism see, that's the religion that I we, 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 all know. Did. We, we all did. did. We all did. We all did. Baptized in dirty water, so to say. You know, there's a down south thing, but we all did. Don't worry, everything's good now. Yeah, right, see, right. That's, that's that's a BS. That's part. Yeah. That's that. That's that. That that, that um. That's that uh prosperity doctrine. Right. Right. You know. You know. As long as you accept Jesus in your heart, everything. That's that fluffy Hollywood crap. Right. Right. And, right, and right, here, right. here's here's the thing about it. Okay. It does begin with faith. All right, but be, you don't necessarily have to be blessed in water, right? It's, you said you don't have to be water. No, because it's like putting put in water and no. then they say you're blessed. No, no. You're a child of God now. Why do they say that? Be, because it's part of the deception. Right. So, okay. So you ever, you, have you ever heard of the New World Order? Not really. Okay. So essentially the New World Order is they want to have a one world religion, one world money system, which is going to be digital, leading to something called the market of beasts. It's going to be a microchip. Can you grab that sign right quick? Yep. And this, this illustrates it right here. The mic, uh, uh, right, this one right here. Hey, this well, sign everybody's illustrates. Everybody's gonna have that? Yeah, it's a microchip. Oh. So this illustrates it right here. I've seen, I've heard of that number 666. Yeah, right. That's right. a mark of the beast of 
the devil, right? Is that? Well, the, right. the number is the vibration of the, the market beast. Okay. But he's going to break down what the market beast really is. Right. So it, it's so the New World Order essentially they want to have a one world government, one world religion system. Okay. All right. And okay. and one world money. Okay. Everybody's going to be under this, and they're going to try to control. They want to control everything. They want to control what job you work. Uh, what you eat? <laughs> really? Everything. Yeah, yeah. Because with the, if you get this chip, which is the mark of the beast, you're pretty much bound down and saying, okay, I trust you over the Most High. And do, the all, do all of us have to do that? They're gonna force it on everybody. Really? Yeah, but the prophecies say that those who take it, you're guaranteed to go into the lake of fire, which is gonna be the nuclear missiles. Oh, but, shit. but that's what, that's why, that's why you need the Spirit of the Lord. That's why it's important for us to dedicate our lives to the Lord. Because what's gonna happen is when this comes out, okay, if you don't take it, they're gonna deny you food, medical attention anything right? right but the lord says my servant shall eat and my servant shall drink so he's going to feed you in these times so that's what i'm saying that's why knowledge and wisdom is going to be your stability because when they say okay everybody has to take a chip a lot of even christians know that that's something something's not right with that they're going to know that don't sound right that sounds like the mark of the beast even a lot of christians are going to take it but because they weren't dedicating their lives to the lord they were dedicating their lives to their career or other things the lord is not going to protect them that day okay with us Everything we do, we live, we wake up, we breathe, we sleep, we eat the Bible. We dedicated our whole lives to serving the Lord in hopes that when that time comes, he remembers our spiritual sacrifices and says, when everybody else is starving because they didn't take the chip, I'm going to make sure you guys eat. I'm going to make sure you guys drink. Oh, okay. And that's what this truth is about. It tells you in the chapter I got him, I got him about to have him read real quick. It tells you that uh, this truth shall be thy shield and buckler. A shield, obviously, is something that you use to protect from, from bow and arrows or swipes of a sword. You, you know, I could, just by talking to you guys, I could see you guys are filled with the spirit of God. You know what I mean? I could yep. tell that you guys have it. I'll and, praise you. I'll praise you. I could, you know, I could read people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. like, you could see that that spirit's in you guys. Like, you have it all, you know what I mean? And it's not, you know, I, lo I like that. I love well, that. Well, well, thank, thank you, sir. Yeah, that, that goes into First John 4, 1. It says to... To, to try the spirits to see if whether they're in the Lord or not, roughly right. paraphrasing, you know. And uh, but I, it was be so. So that that priest of uh, that scripture, I get ready to read the Psalm the ninety first chapter, go into uh, the times coming in and, and what uh, uh, what we what we truly need to be shielded from in the great the, the times of great evil. Right. So I'm gonna finish this off in Saint Matthew twenty four. Yep. And then he's gonna read you the Psalms ninety one because yeah. that's right. it's a very important to understand these things. Yep. That's the Saint Matthew twenty four and six from the top. Okay. And he reads. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Say, Matt, go ahead. And see, the reason why you're not going to be troubled is because if you, if you, if the Lord brought you to the right teachers and you've been hearing about this stuff, you're looking forward to it. Right. See, the rest of the world, like I said, when all these things start to happen and there's chaos on the streets, everybody else is going to be crying, mourning. You know, when, even when Trump got elected, a lot of people committed suicide because they yeah. don't have the knowledge of the Bible, right. right? Okay, when Trump got elected, even though he says he's gonna bring back draconian measures, he's gonna be bringing back the guillotine, firing squads, which we're apolitical. We know that no matter who won the election, there's still gonna be chaos that's gonna break out. But either way, when he got elected, we weren't worried about it. See that you be not troubled, because why? We understand all these things must happen before the kingdom of heaven comes in. All right, oh, okay. so I just, I just want to emphasize that. Okay. So, you should, so really, when you see chaos break out, that's when you should be breaking out a nice bottle of champagne. You should be getting excited right. <laughs> and saying, okay, great. We're getting ready to go into the kingdom of heaven. When you see civil war break out in America, yeah. just pray for the Lord to protect you and say, yes, we're gonna go to the kingdom of heaven very soon. Okay. All right, so okay. Keep, keep reading on that. Yo, this is St. Matthew 24 and seven. It says, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. All right, and going into civil war and a, a, a war between the nations. All right, because nation is a prefix of nationality. Right. All right, so on behalf of the, the, the various na nationalities of these, these various governments, yeah. i.e., China, Russia, you know, and Iran, and so forth, they're going to be a war in this last world's war. All right. Okay. So, um, do you think the war is ever going to come to an ending? Or? Oh, yeah. Well, the Messiah's going to end it. Yeah, the Messiah's going to end it. Right, right. Yeah, okay. the, the grand finale, the gra and it's going to be a short war, too. Right. It's going to be very short. According to the scriptures, yeah, Revelation it, 18. Well, if, 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 oh, okay. he, if, if he would have kept reading on that on that chapter, it would have told you. It says, it said, and a time shall come that has never it. been. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna keep reading it. But 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 yeah. uh, to answer your question, Revelation 18 chapter goes into how um, America, Babylon the Great, which is America, um, is gonna be destroyed in one hour. Damn. So that's why yeah. that 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 further expounds what he said. How 
you know, uh, uh, the war is going to be a short one because the Messiah is going to make it a short one because it was prophesied. That and also it tells you that the time is going to be shortened because it's going to be so bad out here that if it was not shortened, no flesh would survive. Yep, that's Matthew. Uh, okay, uh, another question, if you don't mind. Yeah. No, no. Do, do our does our like people say? Okay, when you die, your spirit goes up to the Lord. Yes. Is that yep. true? Yeah, that's Ezekiel that twelve and seven. That's in the scriptures. Okay. Yeah. So. Are we going to be living in the gates of heaven up there or how? Because I've heard so, so much different. So, so let us answer this uh -huh. and hold that question in your, in your mind. And we'll come back to it after we answer these. After we finish reading these scriptures that I have, but I have told you, we'll, we'll answer that question for you. All right. Okay, so this is St. Matthew 24 and 7 from the top. And it says, For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and oh, earthquakes man. in diverse places. All right, and, and, and uh, uh, to further expound on these ends, these ending signs, including earthquakes, I was just mentioned here in St. Matthew 24 and 7, there was a there was a deadly uh, 6.8 magnitude earthquake somewhere. I forget I can forget the state that it took place in, uh, but there was a there was a there was a I think it was in Cuba, if I'm not mistaken, but it was a 6.8 magnitude earthquake. Okay, that's just another 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 end time sign to be watchful of. Okay, so this is St. Matthew 24 and 8. It says all these are the beginning of sorrows. That's the times okay. we're that's the times we're, we're entering into. Right, that's the beginning of it. The beginning oh. of the great tribulation. Oh, okay. All right. Now, okay. now, now we're gonna read you how to be protected from that great tribulation, okay. Okay. which is by dedicating yourself to the Lord. So go ahead okay. and hit uh, Psalm 91, start from the top. Yep. It's so Psalm chapter 91 and verse one. It reads, "He that dwelleth in a secret place of the Most so High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty." Okay, so. It said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the heavenly father shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. It's gonna, it's gonna tell you what that secret place is. That secret place is really in these scriptures, meaning your, your heart, uh, your okay. mind is in the Lord, okay? Constantly. Okay. okay. Right. The verse, next verse. Yeah, Psalm, go ahead. Okay, Psalm 91 and two says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Yep. Verse three. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. Verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Right. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Oh, okay. So that's why we make daily videos. Okay. This brother puts up one or two videos a day. I put up two to three videos a day. And then we have hundreds of brothers all over the United States. Mexico, every language you can think of, Spanish, French, you know, Portuguese. We even got sign language brothers that go out there and preach in sign language. Oh. So this gospel must be preached throughout the four corners of the earth and then the end shall come. But as he just read, this truth, his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. So you got to look at it like this. The more knowledge that you have on the scriptures, it's like you're building up spiritual armor around yourself, which it tells you in Ephesians, the sixth chapter. It tells you the spiritual armor of God. So People think of that and they think they think that it's just saying, oh, I believe, but then they do whatever they want to do. They live how they want to live. And they're, they're thinking about everything else but the Lord Monday through Saturday. You could ask them the average. And I, I don't I don't mean this to, to, to belittle anyone, but you could go to the Christian church and you can ask somebody, what is the definition of sin and where do you find it in the Bible? Yeah, and I, they won't. They won't be, right. So no disrespect, but that's not a good sign because. That means you don't, you don't, there's a lot of knowledge that you're lacking because that should be the very first thing that you know. And just, just for edification's sake, I'll tell you where it's at. The definition of sin is in 1 John 3 and 4. It says, sin is the transgression of the law, but he that transgressed the law has sinned. Okay, roughly, that's, that's roughly paraphrasing. But okay. sin is breaking the laws of the Heavenly Father. Okay, so, so, so you know where to find it at. But anyways, I'm just, I'm just making an example to show that most people that believe that they're going to be saved, they don't even have down the basics of the knowledge of the Lord. So that's the reason why it's extremely important, not just on Sunday, but Monday through Sunday, that you are studying, reading the word, and listening to those that are edifying you on the prophecies of what's getting ready to see, come. But, see, my my thing was, okay, I started off Catholic, okay? I wasn't mm -hmm. getting nothing of Catholic. We were, it seemed to me like we were just uh, uh, bowing to saints. I, I didn't get nothing out of it. But you're not even supposed to do that. You know, I never, never got nothing out of it. Yeah, I, I went I, to a Christian and... Yeah. I mean, sure, you get the word a little more, you know, I, I got a little bit, but I mean, something's not, you know, idolatry. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, but, it, you know, it, it's really just, it, it, you know, all, all, uh, you know, these religions are just man-made, uh, 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 you know, um, man-made, um, 
you know, festivals of, of uh, a pagan idolatry. You know what I'm saying? Right. Going into the idea of polytheism, which means going into the idea of worshiping multiple gods. Because when, when people call on Jesus Christ, for example, they're calling on uh, a plethora of, of a multitude of, of many pagan gods. All right, just to name a few. All right, Jupiter, Zeus, okay, Serapis Christus, okay, right. uh, 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 Baal, Molech. They're calling yeah. on all those gods. You and, see what I'm saying? And, and I want to say this, just because, because, make no mistake, we're not saying the Son of God does not exist. We believe in him. As the scripture has said, we believe in him. We just, his name is not Jesus Christ. And that goes back to what we told you about these people right here yep. been ruling the world for 2,000 plus years. Part of their deception, as I mentioned earlier, the New World Order that would have one world religion, that's Roman Catholicism. That's that's what they came up with. And we go into the history of all that. Back in uh, 325 or 325 AD, 323 or 325 AD. 325. Okay, there's a man named Emperor Constantine. Okay, and he had something called the Council of Nicaea. And he brought all of the, the uh, different, um, I guess you call them Christian, he brought all the different Christian denominations together and they decided on one doctrine and one name and that's where you came up with Roman Catholicism. Oh, okay. Okay. And then from there, later on down the line, that's where the, the uh, what you have called, what's known as the Protestants, they rebelled, okay, or the Reformation. They, okay. they, they had reformed uh, Protestants. A, a Protestant really means protest. So they were protesting the doctrine of the Catholic Church, but they still came from the Catholic Church really. From the okay. Right, so so they really their doctrine really isn't much different. The only difference is that it's a little bit less pagan. But the truth is still not really but, in it but fully. Why, why do we, uh, we believe, we, you know, I, I was, since I was small, my mama, you have to believe in this certain saying, he's gonna be the one, Saint be, Anthony, Saint be, be, Charles, be, Saints, whatever. And she yeah. wanted us to have our beliefs in that, so I grew up kind of, be, you and know we'll, what I mean? Go to uh, Deuteronomy tw uh, 28, okay? Because, so the reason why is because it tells you in the Bible, and we don't wanna go into, it's a lot. Really, I would love if you had a notepad and you're able to write this stuff down and you can read it for yourself. So maybe next time we come out here, we, we generally tell brothers that they want to come listen to bring notepads. Because okay. you're going to want to remember this stuff so you can go back and read it for read yourself. It you can also do is you can just, he's going to give you the channel. You can go back and, and just uh, uh, rewind, you know, rewatch the video and just write down all the precepts that way. But if we ever right. see you next time, you know, okay. it'll be, you know, be more convenient for you to write them down. Okay. Exactly, right. But um, so the reason why that is is because, as we said, Okay, these people, even going back to the time of the Savior, you know, who the world calls Jesus, yes. his true name is Yahweh Shai, all right? And he is the Savior, the Son of the Most High. Um, but these people right here have been ruling the world ever since then, even before then. So they created that one world religion, which today people know of as Roman Catholicism, all right? And of course, it's very, very easy to, 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 uh, to change things even after one or two generations, okay? Say, for example, like, are you, I'm guessing you're a so-called Mexican, maybe? Spanish. You're Spanish. Yeah, Mexican, yeah, Mexican. Okay, you're so-called Mexican, right? So, all right, when the when the conquistadors came over to what's known of as the Americas, okay, North America, which would be North America, uh, would be the United States, Mexico, and Canada, okay. you already had people that were living here, obviously. You had the so-called natives, okay, the Native Americans. Right, right. So, what did they do? They, they beat them, they killed a lot of them, and the ones that survived, they taught them Roman Catholicism, okay? That's what you're a product of. So the reason why you grew up learning Roman Catholicism is because your ancestors, all right, that, that was beaten to them. Right. So that's all you knew. Right. And it was the exactly. same for us. Right. And exactly that's right. in the Bible. It tells you in the Bible that you shall serve your enemies in the land of your captivity, and you're going to worship their gods, gods of wood and stone, which your fathers never knew. Because before that happened, uh, your forefathers, they knew the understanding of the Bible. They understood who the Heavenly Father was and who his son was. Okay. All right. But... They lost it over time because of their disobedience. Matter of fact, before we even go into Deuteronomy 28, I'm gonna read this to you. Okay. okay. So we just so you understand that history of how, uh, the, like I said, the, the Spaniards came over, which the Spaniards generally are descendants of these people. They're not they're not on the same level. Not every Spaniard is on the same level as these people, but obviously, but they they're the the underlings of of these people right here. So I just want to show you this right quick. This is Jeremiah 17 and 4. Okay. When, when they came over here, they beat, they beat the, uh, your language out of you, understanding everything. This right. is Jeremiah 17 and 4. It says, And thou even thyself shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For you have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. So he says you're going to discontinue from your heritage. Now, further elaborate, further elaboration on that, all right? 
So if you're so-called Mexican, okay, mm -hmm. if you go into the Bible, go all the way back to Genesis, can you find Mexican in the Bible? As in, because because you you heard of Noah, right? Yeah. yeah. So do you know how many sons Noah had? I don't. I nope. just know that he opened the seas or whatever, okay. like something like that. So, so know, that's the way I grew up, you know what I mean? And that's okay. That, we'll, we'll, hear, we'll teach you all these things. And like yeah. I said, we give you the scripture so you can go and read it for yourself. Okay. okay but Noah, he was of the, he was of the elect in his time. The Lord flooded the earth, all right? And, and the Lord only saved eight people. He saved Noah, his three sons, and their wives. See, my, now, my thing, sorry to interrupt you, no, you're good, you're my good. thing is, I don't want to be left. Oh, well, you know what I mean? Do you feel me? Oh, I don't none, none of us do. You know what I mean? Because you, mean? I, 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 you I, fear. Yeah, you have yeah, fear. Yeah. That's a yeah. gift. That's a spiritual gift. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. Yeah, but I'm, yeah. I'm gonna. So I'm just gonna give you a brief history, and then we'll continue on. So um, Noah had three sons: Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Everybody that is on the face of the earth right now descends from one of those three sons. Okay. And those sons had sons, and those sons became different nations. If you read the, if you read the generations like for example have you heard of Egypt yeah the country Egypt so the original biblical name we Mitzrayim all right in the, in the modern day Hebrew which goes back to one of Noah's Noah's grandsons oh, okay shit. so okay. all these different countries and lands were named after biblical nations okay but today we don't know our biblical nation because of what we just read right there it told you it tells you in the scriptures that these people right here when they took over the earth over 2,000 years ago, one, the biggest part of the deception was to hide who everybody was, all right? So there is no, in the Bible, you don't read about a, a people called the Mexicans, the Puerto Ricans. They're, that, they don't, that's not in the Bible. You're absolutely be right. Because you go back to a certain biblical nation and they didn't want you to know who that nation is. Because if you know who you were, then you would know who the God of your fathers is. You would know that you are the people that are written of in the book and you would be obedient to what the Lord said he would do in the end times. Now, in my case, is it too late for me? No, because I mean, if, you're, if you're here, if you so I'm going to tell you when it's too late. When you don't see, when the famine of the word comes, I don't know if you heard of the famine of the word. I okay, so the famine, so when the great tribulation starts, there's going to be many things happening on the earth. One of the things that's going to happen is the famine of the word. Okay, so what the famine of the word is, a famine means a lack of. So like a lack of food, that's what you think of when a famine okay this bible is spiritual food so when the famine of the word means that it's going to be a lack of understanding of the bible on the earth only very few people are going to have it and that those are going to be the ones who soaked it up before the great tribulation how happened. about the the non-believers the non-believers you have a lot of those that they're going to be destroyed you can't even talk to them they're going to be destroyed you know i have a brother down here and i say something about the lord he gets mad at me bro wants to fight you know well, the, re the reason though the reason why that is is in uh, saint john the third chapter it says that you know men love darkness because they despise the light right and the right. light is the holy spirit of the word and, and that's why the messiah said in saint john 8 and 12 he is the light so they really hate him right because let, let me ask you this okay when you walk when you walk through the streets almost any major city in america all right you'll see homosexuals okay two men walking together holding hands kissing yeah. hugging do you think the god of the bible agrees with that mm -hmm. of course not right so if you, if you acknowledge the light, if you acknowledge the truth of the Bible, it compels you to have to change your ways. People don't want to do that. Yeah. So what do they do? They get defensive, they get angry. Right. That's right. where the division comes in at. That's where, that's why I said your family's gonna turn against you. Because yeah. most, people on the, most people on the earth, even a lot of people who call themselves Christians, okay? When, when we bring up the things that are in the Bible and we say, you know, the Lord says you can't do that. You shouldn't do this. And we read it to them. They're so, they're used to living a certain life and they don't want to change that. So they get angry with you, even so, though, even though they say they believe in the Bible, so everybody what, says that. What's your guys' religion? We're Israelites. Israelites. Okay. We're Israelites. So, okay. so, uh, okay. so in the Bible, okay, in the Old Testament, right, and in the New Testament as well, okay, the Lord He made a covenant with the sons of Jacob. Okay. Ja you know who Jacob is? Jacob I've, and Esau. I've heard of him, yeah. Okay. But I'm not too. So Jacob is. Jacob is the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob is the, 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 the son, and it said his descendants would receive the inheritance of the kingdom. All right? This is in Genesis. So I, I, if you don't know this, I implore you to go back and read through the whole book of Genesis, and you'll get this understanding. Okay, so like I said, everybody that's on the earth goes back to a biblical nation. Okay, according to biblical prophecy, the sons of Jacob 
are these people that are on the sign, all right? Okay. These people are on the sign. Not, now, not everybody from these nations is a son of Jacob, a descendant, a, a, a descendant of Jacob, but generally, okay, this is where they went according to prophecy. The, the, see, uh, you had the, the, Jacob, his name was changed to Israel. That's where you get the, that name, Israel. In Hebrew, the word is Yah Sharala. Israel is really Yah Sharala. Yah means he, Shar means prince or son, and Allah means power. Okay, so the sons of the power, the sons of God, all right? They were the ones that the, that the, the, the kingdom of heaven was promised to okay. in the Old Testament. Now, he had 12 sons, and these 12 sons became different nations, and they spread out throughout the earth. And okay. it says in the last times that they would come back and be gathered together, primarily here in America. This is, the, this is Babylon the Great, okay, the, 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 the chief nation of the earth, and they would be delivered from there, from the land of their captivities. Now, before that happened, they split into two kingdoms. The southern kingdom, all right, who who uh, who the world calls Jesus, he's from the tribe of Judah. You probably heard the Lion of Judah, okay. all right. But then you also had a whole other bunch of tribes that were scattered, and this all this is all a lot of history. I'm just giving a very brief rundown of it. Okay. The northern kingdom right here, and it said in the Bible that they came to a land known as Arsareth in the Bible, which was it means other land. So the natives that were here in the Americas, North, Central, and South America, are these people. Okay, and if you're so-called Mexican, then you could be from this tribe, the tribe of Issachar. Okay. Right. So, the reason why this is important to know is because, and this is the reason why I was hidden, is because according to prophecy, the Lord is going to gather and elect uh, a chosen from the from these twelve tribes, and He's going to use them to push out the knowledge to, to clean people up with the truth. Because when you when you learn the truth, it cleans up your spirit, it sets you free. Okay. So, that's what we're doing. We're those men that were, you know, and hunters, thousands of us, and we were sent all in every country in the world, but it started here in Babylon the Great in America, and that's where the most of us are. But we're out here to preach and prophesy to anybody who has the ears to hear. That's part of the gathering of the sons of God. And then they're gonna be sanctified through the truth, and they're gonna prepare themselves to be delivered. But okay. Mexicans, all right, like you see right here, Chava Issachar, all right, that's that's where you would go back to the biblical nation. Okay, now not not every Body that's from Mexico is from the tribe of Israel. Not everybody, but you know through the Spirit. Could you give me Romans eight and sixteen? Okay, it tells you. It tells you in the Bible that the, that the Spirit uh, bears witness, bears witness that we are the sons of God. Okay, the reason why is because, like I said, an elect is going to be raised up out of those tribes. Okay. And if you're not of the elect, you're not going to be able to understand prophecy, and you're not going to have a desire to understand prophecy. So that's why we come. That's why you coming up here. Is very spiritual and that's what we do we just come out here and whoever's meant to hear it we don't try to force it on anybody because we know it's not for everybody okay right. those who the lord wants to get it he's going to put the spirit on them to stop well something called me exactly the holy spirit. The whole, that's the holy spirit well, right. uh, uh, proverbs 16 4 says uh man's going to the lord so that's what that's what called you up here then, uh, uh, and another thing i was going to say too i want to edify you on religion so there's two there's two manners of religion you have the latin term religio which means restraints all right, okay. so that's the manner of religion that our our enemies, on behalf of the conquistadors and the Spaniards, forced on us. That's why we're where our people are collectively a byproduct of these religions. You know, they go to the, oh, the, okay. the sun god worship temples that people modernly know as right. uh, churches and Roman Catholic cathedrals and so forth right, because right. of the indoctrination that the years of indoctrination and uh, by way of co uh, colonization from right. our oppressors. Yeah. Then you have the other manner of religion, which is the Greek-based term known as threshkos. Okay. So I'm, I'm gonna edify you in a second because just to answer your question on what religion are you are, are you okay? But I'm, I'm, I'm gonna bring out the one that he called for Romans 8 and 16 first. Right. Okay, it says this is Romans 8 and 16. It says the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Right. So so if you're not, if you go to um go to Joel, Joel chapter two now. All right. So if you're not a child, if you're not, because everybody's not a son of God. That's that's just the truth. Everybody else on the face that's everybody else on the face of the earth is not you know, a, is not a You know, here, time. for example, here. Okay, you go around here. You mentioned the Lord of any kind or something, bro. These guys get mad. They, you know, they, you can't, you know. That's why I can't share with nobody because they're all like, nah, I don't want to hear, bro. Get out of here, bro. You know. Well, they're, 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 they're in the darkness. Yeah, they're in that's the darkness. That's why second, you know, you know roughly paraphrasing Second Corinthians six and fourteen. Says, what communion does light have with the darkness? Their, 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 their spirits are not compatible with your spirit because the Holy Spirit is supping with you. It's right. dealing with you 
and looking to edify, nourish, nourish your spirit, okay, with the Holy Spirit of this of this word, whereas it's not it's not giving them that luxury. That's right. why there's a clash. Oh, okay, okay. You know? Yeah, because because everybody's not everybody's not chosen. Okay? Okay. okay. Everybody's not chosen to get it. Um, I want I want to read this to you right quick. This is the book of uh, First Corinthians. <clears throat> Excuse me, I gotta find it real fast. Okay, I got it right here. First Corinthians, I'm gonna go to chapter two. All right. First Corinthians chapter two, and I'm gonna start at verse um, 11. It says, for what man, actually, excuse me, I'm gonna start at uh, verse nine. First Corinthians two and nine. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. And how do you learn that? You learn it from reading the Bible, the prophecies. It tells you what the Lord has prepared for his elect, okay? Verse 10, though, but it says, But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For now, let me stop you for a minute. Okay. How do you get the understanding of, of like, if you read a scripture or whatever, does that have a hard time, like, understanding? Understanding. understanding. How, how, right. how could you help me there? What well, that, the that, so that, that just comes with the, the Holy Spirit revealing it to you. But that's going to come, the more that you read, the more that you study, and then just keep continue reading it until you it kinda, it's gonna start clicking to you okay right exactly yep okay. that's how it works there's a scripture can you give me proverbs 16 and 3 before i even continue i want you to read this because it says right here it tells you commit thy works unto the lord I mean dedicate your works your life unto the lord and he will establish your thoughts okay which means that if you commit your life unto the lord dedicating yourself then he will give you the knowledge that you seek after okay okay that's okay. what that means so okay. i'm gonna have you go ahead and read that right quick um, you know, before I'm I learning, I'm learning. Love from you guys. I swear to God, it's helping me. Well, good. That's that's wonderful, man. Like I said, you next time. Me, brothers, man. I mean, I really do appreciate this. Oh, for sure, man. That's, that's what I'm here for. Hey, Be thankful to the Lord. Exactly. We're, we're, yeah. just, we're just vessels. We're just doing what we're just doing our duties. That's right. Right. We 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 wouldn't be able to teach you anything if the Lord wasn't giving us the, the wisdom to teach you. Right, right. So it's you know. The, it's not uh it's not even us man it's all to the lord but everything you guys have said makes a whole lot of sense compared to to hearing christianity and all that you know what i mean yeah you know, yours makes i could see the the real picture now you know what i mean right right and, sense, and, and that ultimately here's the thing so okay ultimately everything that's getting ready to happen in the earth it's like one giant puzzle the more of the bible that you learn you have more and more puzzle pieces to where you can eventually get the puzzle pieces together and now you see the whole picture and that's really what you're trying to do because if you see the whole picture and you're like, oh, this is what's gonna happen. This is how I'm gonna escape. When these things happen, you're not gonna be afraid like everybody else because you know, you, you've seen the picture, you've seen the vision. All right, go ahead and bring out that Proverbs 16 and three. Damn, I would love to have the word the way you guys got it. Hey, well. I mean, you guys don't even look at the Bible. You know what I mean? Well, I wish I could the, whole, the, Holy Spirit. the Holy Spirit tells us what right, to say. Right, right, exactly. And, and, and it's it, like everything that we're bringing out, it wasn't planned. Exactly, none of it's planned. That's a, right. To expound on your point, could just, and that just further confirms that the glory, all the glory belongs to the Lord. You know what I'm saying? We're just vessels exactly. okay. that he's using okay. to edify you. The right, glory right. and honor is to the Lord, right? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yep. We, we, um, sometimes we go out there and uh, people people will, will try to praise us or even other brothers, you know, that are that higher up. Us, they, you know, they say, wow, you guys are so great. Hey, we don't even want the praise, man, because it's not us. Right. Like, it, it, we're, we're just piece of the flesh. Exactly. You know, if, if, if the Holy Spirit is not with you, you're not going to be able to do that and that's, that's the thing you know don't get discouraged because really what's happening right now is you're learning the truth you believe in it and then eventually you become born again yeah but and see, that's when that's the lord my, is gonna really thing. i get discouraged because of the fact that people always knock me down you try to say something about the lord oh no get out of here Dad. we don't want to hear that yeah. but 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 guess what see that that I'm also always comes getting knocked down, bro. but you know that and we're gonna we're gonna read it but that also comes with that also comes with the more knowledge you have because in the bible it tells you expect these things people okay. are gonna hate you they're gonna turn on you okay. don't get discouraged expect okay. it and okay. actually not only does it tell you to expect it it tells you to be happy when it happens okay. because okay. in luke this is luke the sixth chapter let me read that real quick and and before you ask any more questions okay, i'm gonna read this one and then we gotta keep reading what we got because we keep switching topics and if we do that too much okay. you don't hear the word right okay well, let me bring this out the one you, when you call for okay Proverbs 63 says commit and i'm, I'm gonna make a good point yep. it says Proverbs 16:3 it says, "Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established." So if you commit your ways, your thoughts rather, okay, to the Lord, he, 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 he's going to establish you by right. default. Okay, I mean what? At, 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 uh, uh, eventually, he's going to multiply your understanding. Exactly. And I want to back that up with this quick uh, uh, scripture here in the book of First Peter, chapter one, and verse um, two. 
It says elect. <laughs> okay? Elect means chosen. Right, chosen. It yep. says elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit and to obedience. Right. So, so he says elect, chosen according to the foreknowledge of God, which means if he, he, he already knew exactly what you're going to do and he knew one day I'm going to bring him to the truth and I'm going to wake him up. All right, and then I'm going to sanctify him. It says through the sanctification of the Spirit yeah. to obedience. So what happens is, okay, you, you hear the truth, it starts to clean you up, you start to understand more, and then you become obedient to it because you truly believe, and that's that's when you're on the right path. All right. Okay. Yep. And it says, and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. All right. Here's the point: grace unto you and peace be multiplied. All right, so the more knowledgeable you, you become, the more peaceful you are in your mind, your mind because it says in St. John 80, 32, the truth shall set you free. It was only right. to set the, the mind free of the elect of the people who seen that sign there being the, uh, the lost to a child of Israel. Right, right. Okay. Yep. Now, also, so I'm going to read this to you because you said that people come up against you. That's a good thing, okay? Maybe this will, this will ease your mind on that. This is uh, St. Luke chapter 6 and verse 21. As a matter of fact, I'm going to start at 20. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, this is the Lord speaking, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of the Most High God. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven, for in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. So it says, when people come up against you, when they hate you, because I'm telling you, we got stories. We have people come and spit on us, throw food at us, throw drinks at us, kick our signs around, okay? We're like, we're like, oh, great, thank you, Lord, because guess what? They did the same thing to the prophets that were written of in the Bible, all right? So we're coming in that same lot. We're coming in that same spirit. They did the same thing to our Savior. All right, they, they, they took him, they beat him, they spit on him, they crucified him, all right? We're gonna receive it that same treatment to a lesser extent. So when that happens to you, when you try to witness to someone, you try to tell them, hey man, like, you don't, things don't have to be this way. You should, you know, you gotta just trust the Lord, study, you know, and the Lord will clean you up, he'll help you. And they get mad at you, they hate you. Be happy about that, that's a good thing. That means that you're gonna be rewarded for everything, every time you suffer for, for the sake of righteousness, that's, that's adding to your spiritual bank account with the Lord. All right, so that's a good thing. That's a, that's when, when that happens, you should be happy. You should be excited. You should go home and thank the Lord for him sending people to persecute you, man. That's okay. a wonderful thing. I got a back of scripture on that. Yep. This is uh, the book of um, St. John 15. And um, point is in verse 19. All right, so this is uh, St. John chapter 15 and uh, 16. Start of verse 16. It says, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whosoever ye shall ask of the father in my name he may give it you right. verse 17 says these things i command you that you love one another verse 18 says if the world hate you ye know that it hated me before it hated you right. here's a here's a point in verse 19 the real point saint john 15 and 19 says if ye were of the world the world would love his own but because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. So, that is, so that's a okay. that's a good, a, a very good sign that the Lord can be dealing with you, man. Right, exactly, yep. exactly. Yep, that's a very good sign, man. When, when the world comes up against you and all you're trying to do is just spread the gospel, that's a good thing. That means that <laughs> you could be you could be of that effect. whatever the hell right. and I just try to help him bro I'm, I'm trying to get him to go follow the right path you know what I mean I'm trying right. to this may be the Lord will help him I don't know what to do bro you well, know? well here's the thing I just pray for him one thing you can like do that. is just pray for people man it's right. up to the Lord to answer the prayers because there's a scripture where it says the Lord the the, the, the Lord's prayers no, excuse me the prayer the, of the righteous man uh what was the scripture where it says uh the Lord only answers the prayers of the righteous yeah John right. 9 and 31 Okay. Uh, it might be that one. He, he, he can is, bring it out for edification. It, it says, we know that the Lord heareth not sinners, but but uh, he but he that doeth the will of the God, oh, that's another one. him he hears. There, there's the one I was thinking about in Proverbs, but that, 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 one, that one applies. That yeah, one definitely okay. applies. Yeah, right. but um, really, here's the thing, man. You know, 
and this is a bitter truth, and I'm not gonna tell, I w I'm not gonna tell you to give up on family, I'm not gonna say that, but the bitter truth of it is that the vast majority of times, you're probably gonna be the only one out of your family that the Lord decides to save. That's, that's just the bitter truth. It's not always gonna be that way, but that's the reality of it, okay? Both of our parents, our, well, both of our, our mothers, we pretty much came to the conclusion they're not gonna make it. And the rest of our family, we've came to that conclusion that they're not gonna make it. Maybe the Lord, he may decide, you know what, I, I do you a favor, I do you a solid, and I, because you're such a good servant, I'll spare one, one or two people out of your family for you. But the, the honest reality of it is that most of them are not gonna make it. And on top of that, when you, the more that you learn the truth and you try to teach other people, because you, because it's really an act of love. You're trying to save them right, because right, you know right, that right. death is going to come if they don't, if they don't get it, right? But what's going to happen is they're going to rise up against you so hard that you're going to be like, you know what? It's in the yeah. Lord's hands. And See, you, that's what I do. I just walk off. Yeah, Isn't it the yeah. best thing to do? Because that is the best I don't want to sit there and argue with nobody. You know, I got, right. you know, if you want to accept whatever, I'm just telling you. Well, you know, I just try, try to bring it to the Lord. That's right. all I'm trying to do is even get into a, a Bible study, get into a church, but get into something. Get off that, you know, you hate to see a brother down like that. Right. But you know, another thing too is this, so, and you, you said this yourself, that, you know, you're, you're, you know, you, you, you've been a Catholic, right? Catholic. Okay. So you've, you've been Catholic most of your life. And here's the thing about it, okay? And I, I, I got a personal testimony on this, okay? Um, when I, I, we all were Christians or Catholics at first until right. we started really, really, really studying the Bible and then the Lord woke our minds up. Give me, give me 2 Corinthians 3 and 14 if you don't mind, okay? Um, so the thing is, is that the reason why it may not be working is because you haven't, the Lord hasn't, uh, he didn't, he hadn't give you the knowledge yet to be able to open up another person's mind because the only way the spirit can work is if it's working heavily in you first. So what I mean by that is this, okay? When we teach you the Bible, we teach it to you and you can see these things happening in the real world. When we, when we bring out, when we, we bring out in the Bible, you see it, everything that we say, we can show you where it's happening in real life. That's what, because the prophecies, we call the prophecies, is really a movie script. That's why it's called scriptures. Okay, so that's the power of the prophecies. When I tell you this is what's going to happen, yeah. and then I can show you in the Bible where it's going to happen, and then it happens, that's power right there. They don't, they don't do that. In, they don't really talk about prophecy in the Christian church. It's more motivational speeches. Right. So maybe he doesn't believe now, but when you tell him, hey, this is what the Bible says is going to happen, and then he sees it happen for himself, He'll have a change of heart. Yes, sir. You know, a brother. Maybe he one, will, maybe one, he will. one of my brothers says, "You know what? You, you just go plant the seed." Yeah, yeah. That's all you can do. That's true. You know. Uh, uh, right. You know, he said, "Just go in there and plant the seed." If he if he wants to take it, if he doesn't, that's you know you already went that's, in there and did your you did your job. It's up to the heavenly. You know, father. I've never done drugs in my life, and I've grown up here all my life. Everybody around me does that shit. Yeah, yeah. I know. You I know, know how it is. It's rough out here. I know how it is. I got, I got a scripture to back up what you said. Okay. This is First Peter, excuse me, First Corinthians chapter three, and verse. Uh, start at verse. Um, start at, well, yeah, I'm starting verse five. Excuse me. Uh, first Corinthians three and four says, "For while one said, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollo, are ye not carnal, as in the flesh?" Okay. Verse five says, "Who then is Paul, and who was Apollo? But ministers." By whom he believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. Right. So he's saying, he's saying, who are? Just like we told you, who are we? He's saying, who is who is Apollo? Who is Paul? We're not we're not anything but vessels. That's it. All right. Yeah. Okay. Here's the point. First Corinthians three and six. I have planted, Apollo watered, but God gave the increase. That's right. So okay. what he's saying is that okay, we can plant the seed. All right. Uh -huh. We can plant the seed, and then we can even try to water that seed. But it can only increase in someone and grow and sprout into a tree if God wants it to. That's the point he's trying to make. So that's 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 correct. All you can do is plant the seed. All right, that's all you can do. What were we okay. talking about earlier? Well, water is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. Right. Okay. In, order to break, okay. in order to be able to break these scriptures down and to decipher what is being read in these scriptures, especially in the spirit of prophecy, the Holy Spirit has to be dealing with you directly. Right. All right. And to further expound on that, this is First Corinthians chapter three and verse seven, and it says, "So then." Neither is he that planted anything, neither he that watereth, but God that gave the increase. Right. That's why I said in due time, like I said in First Peter one and two, if the, if the Holy Spirit of the, of the Lord is dealing with you, um, he'll he'll multiply. He'll eventually multiply the understanding uh, uh, okay. to you. 
Okay. Right, right. So, and go to that Second Corinthians three, because because this is gonna add, this is gonna add on to that. So once we brought that scripture out in Proverbs, which says, "Commit thy works unto the Lord, and He will establish thy thoughts." That's Proverbs sixteen and three. Okay. okay. So when you when you decide, I'm gonna dedicate myself to the Lord, which ultimately He has to choose you to do that. But you decide, I'm gonna dedicate myself to the Lord. He's gonna start giving you increase on knowledge, and then you'll be more proficient in 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 planting that seed in others. Okay. okay? Start at 2 uh, Corinthians 3 and start at verse 14. It's going to tell you that when your heart, meaning your mind, shall truly turn to the Lord, then will he unlock your understanding. Okay, okay. so go ahead and bring that out. Yep, this is 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 14. And it says, but their minds were blinded. For until this day, remained the same veil are taken away. In the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. Okay, right, so he says, until this day, their minds are blinded, all right? That's the reason why people of the world, they can't get it because the Lord has blinded them, okay? okay? It's, it's a veil over their eyes. A veil is a covering, so they can't see it. They don't have the spiritual eyes to be able to see what we see according to the Bible. That's why, like you said, like I, I, I never got to read it, but the natural man can't understand the spiritual okay. things because you can only understand the spiritual things, which is the Bible, if the Spirit of God gives it to you, okay? okay. So keep reading on that verse, on the next, next verse. Because I gotta still go, still live down the road here. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, we'll, 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 yeah, we'll, we'll finish up with this. That was it, but uh, this is uh, verse 15, 2 Corinthians 3 and 15. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Right. Yeah, even to this day, okay, when the, when the Old Testament is read, which the Old Testament is where the prophecies are. Like I said, Isaiah through Malachi. That's where you, everything that pertains to today's time, the end of the world, it's, they tell you in the church that the Old Testament is done away with, that's not true. Most of the Old Testament is where the prophecies are, actually. That's where you're gonna find all the stuff like we're talking about nuclear war, civil wars, all that kind of stuff. Okay. okay. And uh, 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 another, uh, uh, you know, another uh, way to refer to the Old Testament is uh, the Tanakh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, the, that's the Old Testament in Hebrew. Okay. Right. Okay. 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 Yep. All right. And we'll get these last few verses, and we'll let you we'll let you get out of here. All right. This is Second Corinthians three and sixteen. It says, Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord. The veil shall be taken away. Right. So when your heart, meaning your mind, shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. So when you when you have fully resolved, I want to serve the Lord, and you're you're studying all day, you're focused on the Lord, then what is it? He's going to pull that veil off your eyes, and out of nowhere, like boom, I understand now. Whoa. Okay. All right. And all of us have had that awakening. I right, keep reading this a little bit more on that. This is Second Corinthians three and seventeen. It says, Now the Lord is that Spirit. Yep. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty as a freedom. Right. So he said, now the Lord is that spirit, the Holy Spirit, and the one that's going to take the veil off of you. And when he does, that's when you're truly going to be free okay. in the mind. Okay. okay. So it's, it's, a, it's a work in progress, but it all starts off with you dedicating yourself to the Lord. Okay. So I'm just to go by. So, I, I know you, you got to get out of here. But it's like I said, if you got a phone... I, I gave my channel. If not, I have. A, I can write on a piece of paper for you. Okay. Okay. So uh, my channel, and I, I give you both of our channels actually. Um, all you got to do is you go on YouTube, and you type in. I write it down for you. I get it on a piece of paper. Okay. And uh, you can, you can uh, uh, look us up, and you can go back and rewatch this video and take notes if you like. Okay. And then from there, you can, uh, you can, you can uh, write in the comment section. Just post a comment and say, hey, I want to get in touch with you. What's your email or phone number? And I'll, you know, and I'll, um, you know, I'll give you a call and I'll let you know when we, when we come out here. Cause we try to come out here every couple of weeks. Okay. So this is my channel right here. All right. It is Yawasab, which this is a Hebrew name. So that's, so if you're trying to read it and it's, it looks a little funny cause it's not in English. That's the reason why okay. we, we speak Hebrew. We pray in the Hebrew because that's the ancient language of heaven. Okay. And it's very powerful when you, when you pray in Hebrew, it says that it's more powerful than praying in any other language. Well, you know what, brothers? I appreciate you guys sharing the word with me, man, and I really got something out of it. Good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. that. That's what we're here for. We're here for it. Oh, read something to you. I think getting that for you, read something real quick. Uh, yeah, I actually mentioned that. Because, oh, let me just read it for you. This is St. Luke, chapter 15 and 7. St. Luke chapter 15 and verse 7 says, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented more than over 99 just persons which need no repentance. 
right? Meaning the people that act like they don't need repentance are the people that are, are, are holy than thou, they act holy than thou, they act like they're righteous. You know, the Lord is not dealing with them. Right, right. That's why in the book of St. Matthew, it says that uh, the Lord only came for the sinners. He came for the ones that acknowledge that they're that they're that they uh, they're fuck ups. You know, okay. in so layman's yeah. layman's terms. Right, right. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why he sat with the publicans <laughs> and the sinners. He sat he sat with the, the <laughs> he, yeah, that's why when they when the wicked described the Pharisees, he tried to stone that harlot. He said, let, let he without sin cast the first stone. Meaning you right. niggas, you, 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 you men that claim to be righteous are also wicked. Right, right. Because okay. you're hypocrites. You know? Okay. So meaning, so having all this been said, the Lord and the the, 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 uh, the angels, uh, uh, the Lord and the angels in the spiritual realm rejoice when one sin of repentance. So they're, they're rejoicing over you listening. Right, right. See, I just want to I just want to expound on that real quick. Okay. Yep. I got I got I got one more precept I want to bring out. Um the scripture that says a fool mocks at sin, but a wise man. Let me see. See if you can find that, because I'm I can't find it. You know, we may we may not be able to find it. That's okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, you you, uh, you you got you got the main point. You know, and I, I that piece of paper I gave you my YouTube channel. You can go back and listen to this video, take notes if you like. That's uh that's that's the best thing to do. And then also um, I put my phone number on there. Okay. So if you want, just shoot me a text. I'll, I'll get back to you after we finish up here. Okay. Uh, just text me with your name and you know i say hey greetings you know this is blah 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 the guy you spoke the guys you spoke with and we'll just keep you updated we'll let you know when we come back okay i'm david man. all right nice to meet you all right hey, uh, thank you, you guys man hey, hey. i appreciate it man. oh it's anytime, our pleasure anytime. yeah our keep pleasure. it up keep it up man I, you guys are great we'll start bringing a lot more people that's what i want to see Hey man, Lord's will. You know, right, we, we, will we 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 know that we know that the sanctuary is small, right? But you know, at the end of the day, that's why we come out here because there's no other nobody else out here doing what we do. Right. So we said we got to hit other cities. So we hit a few different cities in the area. The way I look at it, even if people just bring one brother, you know, well, that's what it, that, that's what was read in Luke 15 and 7. That's so it. That's, that's where it confirms you're in the spirit. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know. Yeah. So hey man, just keep praying. You know, keep watch, watch the videos okay. that we put out. Yep. And in due time, the Lord will increase your understanding, Lord willing. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep up. I'll let the call this guy and see when you guys come on next time. I'll yep. Be fine. All right, sounds All right, good. good. All right, man. Have a good day. Yeah, you guys have a bad day. Right, you, you as well. Thank you. Yep. Oh, that's hey, that, yeah. uh, that's hey, be beautiful spirit, man. Yep. Yep. Uh, this is uh, Proverbs 14 and uh, uh, 9. It says, Fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. Right. That's the scripture that I was quoting, okay? Among the righteous, there is favor. A fool makes a mock at sin, though. Someone who doesn't think that, and you think they're too good to repent, okay, that's a fool, that's a meatball, that's a blockhead, and that's a jackass, all right? A fool makes a mock at sin, man, all right? Okay, but with the righteous, there is favor, okay? And a righteous man is able to admit his faults, just like um, Psalms of 51 chapter, right? King David, when he, when he committed adultery and he killed Uriah the Hittite, all right, his servant, all right, what did he do? He, he, he went and, and prayed. He bowed down to the Lord and said, Take not thy Holy Spirit away from me. All right, Psalms 51 and uh, 10, I believe it was. 9 and 10. Okay. Hey, Amen. But that, that was that was beautiful. That Hey, that, that was a faith booster. Yep. Reju reju rejuvenated the, the spirit of us, man. Because okay. yeah, he yeah. came up right when we started. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, was, that was wonderful. Let me see if there's any comments on the board. Okay. Uh, the water. <laughs> I don't even know if uh, Thawalai is still watching, but he put up Acts 17 and 30 yep. and 31. Okay, actually, he only put up 30. Could you get uh, 31? The water. Acts 17 and 30, 31. So he says, in the times, at the times of the ignorance, the Most High winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. That's right. Okay, at the times of ignorance, the Most High winked at, you know, our foolishness, our folly, idol worship. It. All these different things that, that Jake was into, man. Okay, but now he commands every man everywhere to repent. And that, be, that hey, that brother was in the right spirit because he said, he said, I want to make it. I don't want to be one of those guys that's burning the fire, man. That's the beginning of wisdom right there. That's the start. Okay, and that's what we come out here for, man. Really, at the end of the day, we talk about many different things pertaining to the scriptures. We talk about many different topics pertaining to the scriptures, but at the end of the day, the message is still the same. All right, the message is fear the Lord, keep the commandments, repent, and, and hope and pray for mercy, man. All right? And now you're going to do all those things if you truly have faith in the Lord. Yeah, okay, you got to preach that. Come so on, this is Acts 17, uh, starting verse 30. Uh, it says, In the times of this ignorance, the Most High Yahweh winked at, 
But now I command all men everywhere to repent, and that all manner of men is talking about the same man in Joel 2 and 32, which is the men of Israel. Right, right. This yep. is uh, Acts uh, chapter 13, it's like Acts chapter 17, verse 31. And it reads, because he had the point of the... Acts chapter 17 verse 31 says because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained whereof he hath given assurance to all men in that he hath raised him from the dead mm -hmm. alright and that that uh that man whom he had ordained is Yahavashah right right Amashah Yahavashah yep all right, the only one worthy enough to open the seals, all right, the seven seals in our uh, Revelation, the fifth chapter, and so forth. Did you give me Sirach 24, 32? Okay. This is um, Sirach chapter uh, 18, excuse me, Sirach chapter 19 and verse 18. It says, the fear of the Lord is the first step to be accepted of him and wisdom obtaineth his love. All right, just like we brought out, okay, that you got to commit yourself unto the Lord and the more truth you have, the more stability you're going to have, man. Why? Because... This truth, all right, having the knowledge with some understanding is a sign that the Lord loves you, okay? But that starts off with fear of the Lord, man. I'm going to read that again. Okay, the book of Sirach, chapter 19 and verse 18. And also, it's also known as, Eccle as Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, okay? Ecclesiasticus 19 and 18. The fear of the Lord is the first step to be accepted of him, and wisdom obtaineth his love. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. And they that do these things please him and shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. See that? They that do these things, right? Because when the Holy Spirit come over you, like he brought out, all right, which is preordained, it's going to sanctify you unto obedience, right? So they that do the things that are written up in the prophecies, okay, Lord's will, will inherit the tree of life, of immortality, man, all right? But it starts off with the fear of the Lord and obtaining his wisdom. All right, go ahead and bring out that uh, that Sirach, uh, 24 and 32 and 33. Bubba Shah. Sure. Uh, this is uh, Sirach, chapter 24, starting at verse 32. And it reads, I will yet make doctrine to shine as the morning and will send forth her light afar off. Right, I will make doctrine, all right? Doctrine is, is the knowledge, okay, the wisdom, all right? <clears throat> I will make doctrine to shine as the morning. Okay, why? Because... This, this prophecy, this doctrine, is a light that shineth in a dark place. All right, keep reading. Verse 33 says, I will yet pour out doctrine as prophecy and leave it to all ages forever. Right, right. All right, which matter of fact, let me get a precept on that. You already know I'm going 2 Peter, the first chapter. All right. Yep. yep. So he says, I will pour out uh, doctrine as prophecy. That's the, that's the spirit of the Lord, man. Okay, the testimony of the one who the world calls Jesus, his name is Yahweh Shai. I right, is the spirit of prophecy, okay? So he's pouring out doctrine. He's pouring out the doctrine of life as prophecy, okay? This knowledge, this wisdom, understanding of the prophecies is what's going to lead to long life and immortality. All right, let me get this quick precept. Second Peter chapter 1, okay? This is that light that shineth in a dark place. This is what's going to keep you stable in the times to come, man, okay? Second Peter chapter 1 and verse uh, tw uh, 19, it says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, Whereunto you do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Okay, so he says I, that that previous verse. Okay, he says that that, that my, my doctrine shall come, my, my doctrine shall come forth as light in the morning. Okay, that's what that's what we're looking forward to, man. And this prophecy is a doctrine of life. Go ahead and read that scripture one more time. It's like it. Yeah, this is the same Matt. It's like it. Book of Sirach, chapter twenty-four and verse thirty-two. Says, I will yet make doctrine to shine as a morning and will send forth her light afar off. Right, boom. Yep. Verse 33 says, I will yet pour out doctrine as prophecy and leave it to all ages forever. That's right. I will yet pour out doctrine as prophecy. So this prophecy is the doctrine of the Lord that leads to eternal life. Get the next verse. There's one more verse on that. This is verse 34. Behold, that I have yet, it's like it, behold, that I have not labored for myself only. But for all of them that seek wisdom. Right. See, that's where it starts. Okay. As we read earlier, man. Okay. The fear of the Lord. All right. And, and, and wisdom obtains his love. Okay, he said, I, I have not labored for myself, 
we're out here for the, for those who are looking to seek wisdom, okay? The Lord has set us up, matter of fact, uh, get Isaiah 50 and 4, all right? The Lord has set us up as his servants, all right, to give the message of truth, all right, which is what is going to clean you up, is going to give you hope, all right? The gospel, the good news, okay? For those that are weary, for the brokenhearted, man, all right? Go ahead and bring that out, Brother Kishore. Isaiah 50 and 4. Now, this is um, the book of Isaiah, chapter 50, and verse 4. And it reads, The Lord, Yahweh hath given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth mine ear to hear as the learned. Right, so he said, all right, the Lord has given me the tongue of the learn, man. That's why, you know, he, 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 uh, you know, he slightly gave us praise, but we don't even want it because it's the Lord that gave us the tongue of what to say so that we may speak to the weary, man. All right. Those that are looking for the truth, that are seeking that wisdom, which is what's going to lead to eternal life and protection in the times to come. As we brought out earlier, Psalms 91 and, and 3, I believe, that this, this, his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. All right. You got any precepts? No. Okay. Give me um, Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. We'll close out. We'll close out with that, man. Okay, we're getting ready to close out. Yeah, I, I'll bring it out real fast. Okay, uh, so at the end of the day, though, it all goes back to the same thing, the fear of the Lord. So that guy, he was he was coming in a good spirit with that. All right, that's the beginning of wisdom. So this is the book of um, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. All right. No matter what we talk about, it always goes back to the same thing. It says, fear the most high and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. All right. And you're going to do that because you got faith in these words, man. And I'm going to get verse 14 as well. Okay. Ecclesiastes 12 and 14. For the most high shall bring every work into judgment and with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. That's right. Okay, so that's why, because the Lord is, is about to bring calamities, man. Okay, and the fear of the Lord, I right, ultimately is what's going to spark you to, to to seek Him and ultimately be delivered. Yahweh Rachazah, man, that's the beginning of it. Okay, so we'll close out with that. Okay, Yahweh Rachazah was edifying, and as always, we want to give our praise, our honor, and our glory unto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Bashim Rakapadash. All right, and double honors to the head apostles slash elder bishops of the great millstone who teach and who rule well. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere Akim. Keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless of whether people hear or whether they forbear, all right? Until next time, Shalom, and abide the ball. ball. That's right. Hey, Shalom, the water for listening. See you, see you again soon, brothers and sisters. Wow.